All right, Sean, we're back on Kulas Ravine, our fourth map with Machine still one up over LZ, but we just saw LZ play a great game on Desert Oasis. And like you said, you were completely surprised by that push. Going into this match, Kulas Ravine, uh, what are you kind of expecting uh, the Terran player to do? Well, I mean, the burden is really going to be all the way back on Machine for this game. Even though Machine's up 1-0, Kulas Ravine really is the most technical map that is available for StarCraft II right now. I mean, there's these big cliffs right behind your natural expansion. Your natural expansion is relatively wide open. Uh, there's these destructible rocks all over the place revealing hidden expansions. Um, there's, the, there's the gold mineral patches on the right side. There's all these Zelnaga watchtowers that are super key for spotting for your opponent. And with all that stuff going on, it's going to be hard for Machine just to play his straight-up style game that we've seen. For him to just do roaches into Hydralisks. So I think that if LZ pulls anything like he did last game, Machine's going to be in for a really, really tough match. It looks like we're going to see... Pretty much just waiting. I mean, you can't really call standard openers that because they actually haven't done it yet. It's still really early in the match. <laughs> but we see the, uh, the supply depot coming down for LZ right outside of his base. Uh, just continue to building SCV. So I guess not talking about the build orders, we've seen a lot of m matches on this map. And I, I think this map is kind of really strong for Terrence because they're able to mm. qu uh, quick expand and get that command center and float it up to that natural expansion just north of their or south of their base instead of taking the natural expansion right outside of their base. And uh, mm -hmm. it's really hard for an opponent to hit that because, of course, like you said, they have to destroy those rocks. So possibly might see that from uh, LZ if he's going to go for kind of an economy build, kind of conservative build, or he might see a completely aggressive build like we saw last match. And if we go over to Machine's base, we do see that that opening he's been doing every single game is back once again, getting that 14 pool, 13 extractor, making sure he has enough gas for those roaches when they pop up, as well as getting that very fast layer. So I'm... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Haha, <coughs> -ha, all right, I'm back. Yeah, just making sure that he can get enough tech to get those hydros quickly enough and have those roaches. Very, very standard opening right now. And we see, that, of course, that refinery finishing there in LZ's base with the uh, barracks also finishing. Uh, interesting to see if he's going to get what, or if he's going to get that tech lab again or go for the reactor. He usually pops out two Marines before he actually ends up getting that attachment to that building. So, of course, we see him building the first one. And then that orbital command now being changed so he can get that quick mule out for the little boost in minerals. And uh, switching back over now to Machine's base, we see him spawning uh, those two Zerglings that he's always spawned in the past three matches and uh, now we see another drone it looks like he's going to do the same build taking that natural expansion right outside of his base the SUV is about to spot his forces but it looks like those two zerglings oh he actually hides the drone a little bit right there from the SUV oh. moving it up so that was really smart play keeping as much information away from your opponent as possible is probably one of the best things you can do in Starcraft and I really like this opening by Machine just because it's, it's quite versatile. I mean, you get the Queen out very, very early on, so you get all those additional larva. Perhaps getting the Geyser just a touch um, later would be a little bit better, uh, you know, because with all this gas right now, already at 200 gas, but none of it's quite being spent right now. But, you know, either way, just getting that early Queen and that expansion up relatively fast is so helpful. You just get so much larva, and you get this big swing forward in your economy. Now, going back over to LZ's base, we see him doing the exact same thing that we saw last game on Desert Oasis with him building that factory and then moving the barracks right next to it. Factory is now done, but, the, oh, those two Zerglings rush inside with the wall off not complete there for LZ Gamer, and Machine is going to be able to see exactly what LZ is doing as he sees his entire base with that link still up. He's going to be able to probably get it out of the Marines as the Marines are quite slow. The Zergling's a little bit faster. He now sees the uh, tech lab being attached to that factory and the other tech lab being attached to the oh, barracks. Man. So, I mean, oh, God. so much information being revealed for Machine right there. Yeah, oh, and the Zergling escapes too. <laughs> escapes with, <laughs> wow, still alive. Yeah. Wow, you don't even need the messenger pigeon. The Zergling just is going to make it home and just say everything anyways. Now I mean, we see that moves. SCV blocking that wall now to make sure that doesn't happen again. He's now going to try to wall it off with that supply depot. Maybe a little uh, miscalculation there for how many supply depots it takes to actually wall off there for the Terran player. Yeah, I think LZ was just shocked that he was going to get scouted that early. Those two Marines did just about the worst movement path it could have. But look at this, a very early Hellion move out. 
trying to take out this Zergling. Looks like it's also going to either go for some damage, and even if it can't, it can plop up at one of these Zelnaga watchtowers. That queen is up at the expansion. The layer's almost done, and that spine crawler might be able to get up in time. But it oh, looks we see like pulling some drones against that. Sorry to cut you off. That was kind oh, of a yeah. desperate maneuver there, pulling those drones against that Hellion. He's able to just destroy those. Oh, waiting on some lag actually right now from no. uh, our uh, producer. Hopefully he doesn't lag out. Not really sure what's going on there. Well, building the intensity okay. for the match. <laughs> there we go. Now oh. it finishes. And now the Hellion's back. Well, you know, sometimes it's good to pull the plug a little bit, you know, just to make sure that you know, opponents are on their feet, both of them are focusing as much as they can be. So oh. poor lag now. I think <laughs> we might have just lost our camera. I'm not really sure. Waiting on our producer to tell us exactly what's going on. We see... All right, looks like we're now back, and hopefully everything's okay for you spectators out there, as you'll be seeing this probably on YouTube. Hopefully nothing was lost there. I don't actually think uh, Machine lost any drones right there from that early Hellion as that spine crawler was able to finish just in time to take it out. And now we see Roaches going across the map to LZ's base, but I think he's going to be able to take those pretty easily as he now has a couple Marauders, a couple Hellions, and a couple Marines to defend that uh, three Roach. I, I wouldn't even call that really a push. I'm not really sure what it's going to do. It's, it's, it's like a roach poke. Sometimes <laughs> it's useful to advance forward with a small number of units, um, just to put a little bit of pressure on, and then back right off. You have to be a little careful because each race has a technique for holding it off. You know, for instance, the Marauder can slow the roach down, and you can pick the roach off. There's the Sentry for Protoss that you can force field and lose a roach. But still, little pokes like that are going to be very useful just to make sure your opponent isn't doing anything too crazy like early expanding or something like that. And in the meanwhile, Machine is just getting himself set up very nicely as that range upgrade coming for the Hydralisks. He has plenty of drones at his expansion, double gassing up there. So it looks like Machine is just in fantastic, fantastic shape right now. And that Speed Overlord, once again, seeing everything that... It seems LZ like, does. yeah, it seems like every time he does that, it's almost at the perfect timing to see exactly mm -hmm. what is going on in LZ's base. He probably sees that reactor on the factory and notices that he's getting those double Hellions built twice as fast because with, of course, the reactor attached to it, you can build two units at once. And the double tech lab on those barracks getting those Marauders out a lot quicker. Now we see those five Hellions, pretty much the same thing that we saw last game, as he's sending them now across the base. One thing to remember, however, though, is that that natural expansion is, of course, before the choke into Machine's base, so he's not going to be able to get in and take as many drones out as he would like. But he's still kind of looking around the map. He's going to utilize that Zelnaga Watchtower, which, of course, when you do have it, it allows you to see a lot more of the map. He probably sees that Overlord right there puking that, uh, puking that creep down on the ground, and now he's just kind of holding off with those Hellions in the middle of the map. As we see, Machine kind of positioned some overlords to make sure that he's not going to be uh, taking out those rocks to go into the expansion, go behind to his main base. But now we see those Hellions pushing into that base. They're going to take out one. Still waiting on some more drones. Two drones now. Still waiting on a couple more. He's going to be able to hurt the economy a little bit, but the Machine's going to be able to easily take those out. And now we're just kind of waiting to see what the, force, the first push is going to be from either of these players. Both players are just massing up. We see a push now from the Zerg player with those uh, Zerglings and a couple Hydralis and a couple Roaches now going into the Terran's wow. base. And now we see the bunker, of course, being salvaged, which is a great us util utilization of that. Of course, getting minerals back. But I think he might have waited, or might, should have waited, actually, because now he's mm -hmm. got about to fight the Zerg player right outside of his base. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a really tough spot for him to be in. Oh my god, pulling all the Marauders back, sees all those Hydralis there, wants to make sure he has a nice, huge concave. This would be a great opportunity for uh, the Zerg to take out those supply depots of the Zerg player. Um, looks like getting, once again, three Tech Labs just loves those Marauders. Also getting uh, some Medivacs there to heal everything up as well as possible. And maybe this is going to work out okay. I mean, he has five Hellions, he has a quite a few Marauders, more than I really care to count directly, and this sort of push could seriously damage his opponent, and if it doesn't, it might be lights out for LZ. This is sort of an all-in type style. We see Machine taking down those destructible rocks, probably trying to get to that little mineral expansion there to get a little bit more of an economy boost. Still, however, waiting for those double evolution chambers of uh, Machine that we've seen in the past three games to help those Hydras out with that 1-1 one -one upgrade, which is a, a lot of help against those uh, Marines and Marauders and Hellions of the Terran forces. We see now the destructible rocks being downed. We see a little bit of a push here from uh, LZ while the majority of Machine's forces are going to be at the back of his base, but it looks like he's now moving them into position, and we're going to see our first fight here at the natural expansion of Machine. He needs to be really careful with these Hellions. He needs to make sure he does maximum damage to those Hydralis. 
The roaches fall relatively quickly, but look at the zerglings at the back just ripping up all of these marauders. The hydros are falling relatively quickly. Another stim going down. LZ might barely, barely break this. He needs to make sure he can heal up properly, but it looks like he's being repelled, and the medevac barely makes wow. it out. It looks like some lazy play right there from those Hydralisks. He should have put him to work finishing that medevac because it only had 7 HP left. Would have been just 1 or I guess 2 as those Hydralisks do 6 damage just to take out that medevac. It's obviously not a lot, but anything in StarCraft helps. We now see LZ getting that natural expansion down as Machine has the Overlord now at the... Uh, I, I don't even know what to call that, the rock expansion, I guess, of uh, <laughs> LZ. Kind of just scouting things out. Now we see a ton of Hydras coming across the uh, middle of the map, going towards uh, LZ, possibly knowing that he's about to expand with that Overlord there up on top of the ridge. So I think we're about to see another fight. We see a couple Zerglings now coming in. Looks like 12 Zerglings getting ready to fight this mass uh, Marauder Force and Hellions. And now we see them start engaging. The Marauders have taken down those Zerglings. But of course, those Hellions is going to be what are going to be doing the most damage, but it looks like all the Zer or the Hellions are down now. Now we just see Marauders losing really quickly to those mass Hydras. It looks like we're... I mean, what can LZ do here? It looks like he's vastly outnumbered by those Hydras. Yeah, LZ's big push was right at the start, and look at these Hydralists ripping through everything after that big first push failed. The Medivac finally does finally. fall. The Hydralists get their revenge, and GG, it looks like Machine wins the MLG King of the Hill round three against LZ Gamer. Yeah, so that is a 3-1 on or three one series with the win on Coolest Rain for the last one. Now, if you were that Terran player, what would you have done differently there to kind of secure the win? I mean, I probably would have gone for a slightly more economic opening. I mean, the Marauders are good, but if you have too many Marauders, it's very difficult to deal with those big Hydralist compositions. And also, I mean, we saw in that game um, not quite the, the, the cute tech patterns that we saw in the previous game. In the previous game, we saw that the Marauders also had an upgrade. We saw dropship play with the Hellions. But in this game, it was just a straight-up big one-time attack. So I would have liked a composition that was a little bit stronger for that. Or, you know, just getting the command center a little bit earlier on. Maybe favoring some tanks there as well. All right, so there you have it, guys. Machine is now going to be moving on to next week, week four, where, of course, the poll will be going up on Monday night, most likely, to where you can vote in our next player, and that'll be up at gotfrag.com and, of course, in our MLG Showcase series on TL.net. There's a forum post there you can go in and vote. And also, if you guys have any uh, players that you would like to see in that poll, go ahead and post uh, the player and also some replays to help me out there, kind of watch those and see if they're actually worthy enough to be thrown into that poll. But, uh, Sean, I, I want to thank you for casting with us in your, yep. in your sickness as you are getting over a strep throat and <laughs> the b bubonic plague, whatever you're sick with over there. Hopefully you get a lot better in this coming week. Oh, I thank you. I promise I will get uh, all sorts of wonderful shots and I'll take my horse pills so I can be <laughs> well and ready for the next week's match. All right, so there you have it, guys. Of course, Machine defeating LZ. 3-1, and uh, this is JP McDaniel, Sean Day9Plot, making sure I say your name correctly, not Plat this okay. time, but Plot. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we were out, and we will be back next week for week four of the MLG StarCraft II King of the Beta Hill Showcase Series. Thanks. Cheers.